Good morning, everybody. I haven't been on for a while. I have been doing a lot of content, but I've been on a um, private Facebook group, actually a few private Facebook groups uh, for alcoholics and addicts. And so I've been doing a lot of live stuff there. And I realized uh, last night that I hadn't done anything for Instagram for a while. I was doing my Courage to Change and my big book readings and I, I just got distracted. There's so many people that need help. You know, the thing that's been on my mind a lot lately I want to talk about is during this pandemic um, are, you know, the addiction rate has risen. We all know that. And the alcohol, it's not surprising. Uh, people even that have addictions in alcoholism with alcohol or drugs that have recovered in the pandemic have picked up shopping. <laughs> It, it, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Shopping addictions, uh, online gambling is up, especially because the kin casinos closed. Perhaps a lot of people that didn't know they had a problem realized they have a problem when the pandemic shut everything down. We also have a lot of families at home and a lot of parents that are at home with children that they are realizing have a problem. Perhaps they wouldn't have known that their child was an addict or an alcoholic suffering from alcoholism. Uh, until later when their kids went to college or, you know, early adulthood. But because of the pandemic, it had really, I don't care who you are, it caused stress and fear on a level that we'd never known before. So I, my heart really goes out to parents of alcoholics and addicts. And I help a lot of parents and I've helped a lot lately. And I think it's time that I talk a little bit more about this on a public level because people are really suffering. There's something that happens. So I guess these, this today is for parents. So if you're not a parent, I guess you don't have to turn this off. It's all good for the experience. Maybe you have a niece or nephew or, or even an employee that this will relate to, coworker. Um, but if you have a child who is sick, I don't care if they have a cold, the flu, um, you know, cancer, broken bone, you, you know, whatever it is, leukemia, uh, childhood diseases, addiction, it is a powerless, powerless feeling. You have to fix it. You must fix it. You must make this better. You are the parent. And it's a whole new level of powerlessness. It's different than when it's your spouse or your parents drink or it's different because you're supposed to be able to fix this. So first of all, I want to tell you, you're not alone. And I want to tell you that, uh, there's support available for you. You don't have to figure this all out right out right now. The thing about this powerless is it makes you feel urgent, like right now right now. I have to find something right now. I know this from my own experience and, uh, and it's not, it's not always that way. It's not a right now fix kind of thing. So what do you do? What do you do if you have a child of an alcoholic? First thing, this parenting thing is different than I thought. I'll just say this. I had ideas in my head. I, I had uh, mothering ideas in my mind of what motherhood looked like. It really looked like a span of birth to 18 <laughs> for some reason. Maybe that was because that's what happened in my household. You know, when I turned uh, 18, it was like, you need to pay rent or you need to go uh, pay rent somewhere else. So not because my parents were mean, because they wanted me to learn the value of money, which I never learned. So sorry, <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm not great with money. I think that's an alcoholic tendency. Um, but I found ways around that and I'll, t I, I'll talk about that in other videos. So it doesn't mean you have to be a Neanderthal. It means that you get smart enough to do a uh, direct deposit, auto pay, and you hire a bookkeeper to help you manage your money because it's not your forte. But I digress. Anyway, motherhood looked different to me. It looked like um, 
it looked different. And I think growing up with Barbie dolls and baby dolls and, you know, I mean, I was a big baby doll girl. I love my baby dolls and I took them everywhere and I swaddled them up and I took them with me. And when we weren't going somewhere, I played at home like we were going somewhere. I cooked and cleaned and I was the ultimate mother. What a ironic joke life had on me. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are that way. I think we really have no idea what parenting is. <sighs> you know, and the length of time. I mean, from what I've witnessed with myself, my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, blah, 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 blah. the parenting really begins when they're 18. <laughs> you think they're going to leave and they don't, or they leave and come back, right? And they need help. It's a different world is what I'm trying to say. We live in a different world and trying to force our idea of parenting or the way we were parented onto children today is not going to work. There was no pandemic when we were a kid. There was no Facebook. There was no internet. There was uh, bicycles and streetlights and you played outside until the streetlights came on and then you came home. Your parents didn't know where you were. You could be at Marcy's house, Kathleen's house, Jody's house, Julie's house, you know, uh, the supermarket, uh, Dairy Queen, you know, all within the course of the day, the mall, all these places and your parents didn't even know. And you came home, right? Streetlights come on, you come home, you run in, you wash your hands, you sit down for dinner, you move on with your life. Nobody took an inventory of your day. Where were you? How long were you at Marcy's house? What did you do at Marcy's house? Was Marcy's mother there? You know, no, we just played. We were safe. It was a different world. It's not the same with us. So here we have a pandemic and you're at home with your kids and your kids are, you know, trying to make the best of it trying to make the best of it and they they find themselves gaming and and then all of a sudden you realize we're nine months into this and you got a problem your kid is gaming all the time you can't get them off the control to get to school work right at home learning going back to school now can't get out of bed depressed anxiety see the problem with these games if you don't know what's going on in your house that's why i want to talk about it if your kids are acting not right, if something's wrong, you need to really take the blinders off of what you thought parenting was and think about just another human being who's trying to make it through a pandemic, right? Do you keep medicine in your medicine cabinets? You might want to check on that. You might want to check how many, are in, how many pills are in each bottle. You might want to lock them up. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. And if your kid doesn't take pills, but they like to smoke pot, they can sell your pills for pot money. Oh God, I know you're thinking, please don't talk like this. I don't want to hear this. La 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 la. We have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. And it's not their fault. First thing I want to encourage you to learn what alcoholism is. If your child has alcoholism, you need to know what you're dealing with. It's just like if they told you your kid had ADHD or bipolar or schizophrenia, you would want to know what that is so you could see what it looks like and how to deal with it. That is the same with alcoholism. Alcoholism is a mental illness. It is on the spectrum of mental illness, okay? It is not your, your fault that your kid has it. I mean, it might run in your family. That's the only connection you have to giving your kid addiction. Um, because it runs in the family. It skips some people. There could be one child in the family or three children in the family that are alcoholics and one that's not, okay? So there's characteristics. Open your eyes and see. If your kid is gaming and when he is not gaming or she is not gaming, she is depressed, lethargic, angry, acts out. You know, let me explain why that is. And, and put yourself in this position. Okay, you've been dealing with COVID now and this fucking uh, political bullshit and everything going on in the United States. Oh, crazy. You couldn't write this stuff in a movie, right? And you get a chance 
for an hour to like have a dream and you get to dream whatever you want to dream and in the dream you're a superhero you can break through walls you can fly right you can morph into anything you want you get to kill the bad guys you get to save the heroine maybe even have sex in your dream right a lot of games are like that you can have sex in your in the game so you need to know what your kid is even playing do you even know what they're playing is it age appropriate you know this is hard i know you don't need one more thing to worry about but this if you're like me and you have a child that's sick and you don't know what the fuck is going on right you need some answers and it's not easy to just talk to other mothers because some mothers don't get it at all or don't care and um or they'll tell you you know you need to lock them up you need to call the police you know <laughs> you know this is my child so what happens is in these games they're the they're the hero they don't have to take out the trash they don't have to do the laundry there's no school work it's all it's all make-believe and and wouldn't you get caught in that wouldn't you get caught up in that then when you put it down you're a two-dimensional walk around you can't fly no one's doing what you want you can't pick up a, a machine gun and take them out right it's lackluster i would call it the world seems lackluster they put down the game and you say did you do your homework can you take out the trash we're eating in 15 minutes Ugh. you know what i mean can you see it so that's why this starts becoming a problem people escape into the world of gaming just like they escape into alcoholism into alcohol drinking it it takes you into a world where you're right everybody's wrong kind of the same when you're drinking you're a superhero right you nobody could tell you anything you're right they're wrong right you make shit up you're you're irrational you know you justify everything do you see the similarities same with drugs escape escapism can't deal with what's happening in my life i can't handle it so i think that we need to know that what's going on in our house if people are are doing that it's it's difficult and there's a lot of help available but i want to start talking about it i know that you feel like you're alone you're not you're not a terrible parent this is not about willpower this is not about a demon child. I'll tell you what, I grew up an alcoholic. I'm going to tell you this. I grew up an alcoholic. I'm, I'm, I suffer from alcoholism. It's apparent, drinking or not. I talk about it all the time so you can see the alcoholism in me. And when I was little, I was adopted, right? I was adopted into a family with no alcoholics, no alcoholism, just like Jesus freaks, <laughs> Bible thumpers. My, my aunt is going to watch this my aunt diana and she's gonna know i'm telling the truth right this is this is true she was not one of them uh but she witnessed it right her husband suffered from alcoholism he died early and uh was tragic um so they were not they were more like me so i always loved being there i just got it right in fact I, that's the first time i made the correlation right now i hope she watches this because maybe she'll you know, I've been more, I've, I've been like a daughter to her. She's been like my mother, my second mother. Um, she's, she doesn't have alcoholism, but she knows alcoholism. Like she's seen it firsthand. So, uh, she knows me and loves me anyway. And, and that's, uh, that's uh, huge. Anyway, I remember being little and my mom's family came over. They're, they're rampant Jesus freaks, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with Jesus freaks. But when you're a little girl and you're already suffering from alcoholism and you're not drinking yet, I think I had started by then. They came back to visit. He was really strict with my nieces, like really strict. Like they had to sit straight up at, at the table. They couldn't put their arms on the table. They had to sit straight up and eat. And if they leaned over like I was, you know, kind of laying on the table, they get sent to the, to the, you know, go to bed. You're, you look tired. You can't sit up at the table. And I was not like that. I was a problem wild kind of kid. I was a obviously a black sheep of the family. I wasn't doing, I love my mom, but I just did what I did. I was very independent. I had 
a very liberal mind. You know, I was pro woman. No one was going to tell me what I couldn't do. I had like seven brothers. So, um, you know, half and step and all around, but really no sisters. Um, so I was really, uh, kind of a tomboy, get it done. Don't fucking tell me what to do kind of person, an alcoholic. And I remember him coming to, to dinner one night. We were sitting there as a family and I spoke up and I spoke my mind. I don't know if it was about the news, something that was going on politically. I don't know what it was, but I said my mind very nicely. And he looked down the table at me and he said, you know what? She's possessed by the devil. <laughs> he told my mom that. She, we need to do an exorcism. She's possessed. She's a demonic child. And I remember sitting there. I think I started laughing. I was like, oh, come on. I mean, for the love of God. <laughs> because I spoke my mind. We're going to have an exorcism. Uh, so... I know that some of you have kids like me or worse, right? And people in your family are going, what's wrong with this kid? This is a demon child. You need to lock this kid up, you know, and I get it. You don't know what to do. You love your baby so much and it's just heartbreaking. God, I think I went on too long. I don't think, I think when I go on too long, I can't post these. I better stop right now. I'll talk more about this later. I'm going to have a webinar on uh, raising an addict child. So uh, look for that. Love you. Bye.